where I stopped last time. I have you started it? Started. Um, let me give you your chocolate. Sounds good. Yeah, this is the last thing I recorded. what we were doing last time and uh, then I want to back up and uh, explain the easy part of the Dirac Hamiltonian because um, when I was working on that last night I found or well, the night before last night I found it wasn't nearly as easy as I had remembered it um, Okay. So we were discussing electron electron scattering. And I have no good chalk. I have chalk that works in room 184, but not here. Oh, and I have to erase all this. Are there any questions? where we were. We were talking about electron-electron scattering and the space-time diagram looks like this. This is an electron coming in, momentum P spin S, another one, momentum Q spin T, and it goes out as this. And this is one possible space-time Feynman diagram. And this thing falls out of the uh, expression for the um, for the amplitude. So let me go back to the beginning. What we're talking about is
then there's another one where... Right, right. There are others, but I haven't gotten to them yet. But that's a different factor. Of that would be a different Feynman di diagram. This, this, this is a... Okay, let's, let's, let's bring up the point that you mentioned. Another possibility is PS Q prime T prime Q T T prime S prime X Y and then the same damn thing Y X. I'll just do the momenta and forget where. Okay. So you've got four space-time diagrams. The electron of momentum P has to be absorbed at X or at Y. The electron of momentum P prime can be emitted at X or at Y. And these two processes are the same. Yes. If you want your chocolate. <laughs> um, if you have two plans, you have to wait and see what the last second question is about. Um, if in the first diagram, when we when we had the factor of two in there, we're already integrating over all x and all y. Right? Yes. So have you not already accounted for every possible possibility? So. Oh, or is it interesting? Um, is it the direction of the travel? Well, no, no, no. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say it's really absorbed at x. And um, and the p prime is emitted at x, and but we could have done the, and we're integrating over all x and all y, but we could also have said, oh, we're going to use these fields to absorb the p and emit the p prime. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so we either use these fields or those to absorb and emit the P and P prime electrons. So is there a time between the absorbing and the emitting of the... Well, never mind time. It's just that this formula with the 1 over 2 means that you can do it here or you can do it there. And in fact, it tells you to do both. In other words, th uh, let's put it this way. This thing here will contain an annihilation operator for momentum P. And so will this one. And you can use either one. And so that's a factor of two. Put it, put it that way. OK, but you also have these other processes that he was alluding to, I think, where the second electron has momentum Q prime, and the P prime electron comes off at Y. And so there are all these four possibilities. They, in pairs though, they're equal, so we cancel the factor of two, and we only keep this one and that one. But let's just do this one and this one first. So I, I think maybe I should actually fill in some of these steps as before. So so we're going to make the p the p electrons with these fields and you remember what I said, namely psi plus L of X on PSQT, well, just using the formula for what the uh, psi field is, in other words, the Fourier expansion of the psi field, maybe I'll use that board again for the what do you think? Should I put it there or maybe do it here? Psi L of X is sum on S integral UL of P 
PNS, B of PNS. So this is the four component spinner. E to the I of PX plus BL of PNS, C dagger of PNS, E to the minus I PX, D cubed P, and the scale factor 2 pi to 3 halves. Okay. And then psi L dagger of X then, of course, is, or what we're going to be seeing in this, in this, um, in these formulas is psi L bar. And remember, psi bar is psi dagger beta, which is <coughs> by definition, I psi dagger gamma zero. By the way, I was flabbergasted last night when I noticed that Shrednicki in his book used, violates the normal convention for the Dirac matrices. He, he uses Dirac matrices that have an extra minus head and we did that. Does it simplify anything? <coughs> Does it simplify anything? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I, it must have from his point of view, but but I think, uh, you know, having the end of commutator of gamma A with gamma B, B2, A to AB, that's, that's something that I thought was the way would I thought that was a convention that nobody would change, but Shrednik would change. It's crazy. All right, so this thing is U bar L P S P dagger P S E to the minus I P S plus V bar L P S C P S E to the I P S CQP to pi three halves. So consequently, this psi plus. So now I'm, I'm where am I in these notes? I guess it's here. The psi plus on that is. Let's 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 not fill in all the steps because I don't have any space. But it's going to be this thing acting on this state. So we've got this B and a U and an EVI PX, 2 pi to the minus 3 halves. And, well, maybe I should do it in detail. So it's the sum and the integral. And it's going to be U of, um, and now I should put in a P prime. and S prime. And now this B of PS is, well, let's put this one in. B of P prime S prime E to the I P prime X DQ P over 2 pi to the 3 halves. So that's psi plus acting on this. But this state itself is B dagger of PS Q on the state QT. And so now this thing gives you a delta function plus B acting on this state. But there isn't any P prime over here. Or let us say, um, I'm going to ignore that contribution. Um, and instead, what we're going to get is um, a delta function of P prime minus P. And so, this integral goes away, and what we get is that this is equal to UL of P and S e to the I PX QT over 2 pi to the 3 halves. <coughs> And 
I see people coughing here. Let me turn off. Let me turn that off. Okay. And then on the other side, we've got the sidebar minus of x acting on this state. Well, once again, that gives us p prime, s prime, q prime, t prime, sidebar minus L of x is q prime, t prime, u bar, L prime, p prime, s prime, e to the minus i, p prime, x divided by t prime, three halves. <coughs> These formulas would be much simpler if we could set 2 pi equal to 1, but we can't do that even in natural units. <coughs> All right, and there's a homework problem related to this. have at this stage? At this stage we have that this thing is equal to e squared over 2 pi cubed, q prime, t prime, integral, time order power, <coughs> side bar of y, a slash of y, sine of y, bar of p prime, x prime, a slash u of p and s, e to the i, p minus p prime, x. That's a four vector <coughs> inner product. p fourth x, p fourth y, q t. And I put an L on this in the notes. That's uh, a mistake because this thing is, everything is summed over. There's a U bar L, there's a gamma here, <coughs> LL prime, UL prime. That's all summed over. So I should get rid of that. Okay. Well, what happens now is that this psi annihilates this uh, electron, and this psi bar annihilates that electron. And so what we get then is e squared over 2 pi to the 6. And now we have um, vacuum integral time ordered product and now it's u bar of uh, q prime, t prime, a slash of y, u of q and t, u bar of q prime, s prime, a slash of x, I should have written x there, uh, u of p and s, and now e to the i, p minus p prime x, e to the i, q minus q prime y. So in other words, this, these fields are doing it y, the same thing they're doing, they were, the other fields were doing it x, and so the phase factors come in in exactly the same way, and you have the same 2 pi q that comes out. Say it again. Should there be a state over there? Yes. 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 My arm, left arm must have been down. Also, D4S. Here, here, you. 
Let's just say that there should also be a D4X and D4Y since we still have the Yes. 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 Okay. Well, now um, we can clean this up a little bit. We have a, a state here, an operator, an operator, a state, time ordering, and then we have all these spinners, which are just numbers. So if we clean it up a little bit, we get e squared over 2 pi to the 6, u bar, u prime, t prime, and these, remember, these are gamma, sla gamma, gamma A, 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 gamma B, A, B. And so this thing is then gamma A, U, wow, there. Ah, oh, that's right, okay. U of Q and T, U bar of P prime, S prime, gamma B, U of P and S. And now integral zero, time ordered product of now um, a sub a of y, a sub b of x, uh, vacuum e to the i, p minus p prime x plus i, q minus q prime y, p fourth x, p fourth y. So that's what we have at that point, at this point. Okay. Do <coughs> you remember? Yes. Sorry, just going back all the way back to the plus and minus that you did. Can you suppress the other terms just because those are different Feynman diagrams? So the psi bar minus psi bar plus when you did that. Uh, I'll point my finger, uh, finger way higher. You want? Higher. So that psi bar minus right. psi bar plus. The reason why you only did minus and plus is because the other ones are different Feynman diagrams. Yes, very good point, yes. Yes, in other words, um, so the other one would be this structure here, E squared, integral, these things, um, you've got really, if you, if you, suppress the minus and the plus and put back the whole fields there, this integral gives you several different terms and we are focusing just on one of these terms, the one that corresponds to this this space-time diagram. And in particular, that's the case where you put a minus and a plus and we'll also be putting a minus and a plus here. Um, and, um, and in fact, we're also saying that, that, the, that, the, that this psi bar minus is creating the P prime S prime one, not, some, not the Q prime T prime electron. And we'll do that other one in a, in a moment after we finish this one. Now, when I was doing that stuff about path integrals, you may have, have wondered, asked yourself, why is it that he keeps talking about time-ordered products? Well, they occurred naturally in the path integral formulation, but you see they're also occurring here. And the reason they occur here is because of the interaction picture. Okay. Now we know what this is, namely that effectively, and the, the, this we learned in, and I'm writing it in the opposite order, but it, you'll see in a moment it won't matter. A to AB over K squared minus I epsilon E to the I K X minus Y D fourth K over 2 pi to the fourth. Okay. 
Now, A to AB, of course, is the 4x4 four four matrix minus 1 plus plus plus. Um, if we flip K, we're integrating over all K, so we can equally well do the minus Ks. If we change to minus K down here, there's no change. So this thing is also equal to 0 time order product A sub A of Y, A sub B of X. Because um, because this is an even function of x minus 1. Well, we have to then stick this in there. And let me just review uh, this business. You, if, if we're quantizing in the Coulomb gauge, then we just have these two photons, the positive and negative velocity photons, which are the physical photons. But we have all these ugly terms, but we saw in the path integral formulation that we could just sort of massage the path integral. And um, <coughs> by the time, in less time than it takes to turn flour and water into noodles, um, the uh, path integral gave us this nice expression for the mean value in the vacuum of the time ordered product. Um, the reason I mentioned that uh, noodle thing is that I was just amazed that in the, in the cafeteria, student cafeteria at Fudan University in Shanghai, and I suppose all the student cafeterias in China, they, um, they make fresh noodles right there. There's a guy with a sack of flour and some water and he needs them, and then pretty soon he's doing this. And um, then a few feet away is a big tub of boiling water, and in go the noodles, and out come the fresh noodles. So it's, um, it's the best place for food, I think. Um, certainly healthy food. If you I think um, beef is real food for real people and China's not the place for you. But, but, um, if you like, uh, well, if you're vegan, it's the ideal place. Although I, all right, this will be story time early. Uh, there, was a, there was one visitor who was very orthodox. And he had to have everything completely kosher. Well, one way of being kosher is to be vegan. But of course, the Chinese weren't just casual vegan. They just, you know, they just make the food. It was mostly vegetables. And you know, was it absolutely correct? Well, so it was. This guy kept insisting that. I mean, he wouldn't eat anything unless it was strictly kosher. It was very hard to tell what was kosher. My view is all religions should be abolished. Good luck with that. Huh? Good luck with that. It's coming. Okay, so let's um, put in this uh, expression here. And when we do that, what we're going to find then is our amplitude. I'll just write it like this. It is then. You see there's a minus i. Uh, it's going to be still e squared. But now we're going to have 2 pi to the 10, because we had 2 pi to the 6. And we get 2 pi to the 4th from over there. And then we have u bar of, of course, q prime, t prime, gamma a u of um, q t, u bar of P prime, S prime, gamma B, U of P, S, 
All right, and all that is times integral a to a b over k squared minus i epsilon. And now we have e to the i k x minus y. e to the i p minus p prime x e to the i q minus q prime y. And d4 x d4 y d4 k. Okay. So that's our, our expression for this amplitude. For this part of the amplitude. Yeah. Does the two positives have, have any physical meaning? Because I remember there's. It has numerical meaning. So I mean, I remember as an undergrad math major uh, when you did like multidimensional spheres and you get large powers of pi and the like. Does that have any like I, I, you know, everything's related, but I don't see it. You. Is anybody starving but doesn't have a question? You're sick. Do you want one? Sure. Well, hell, since you're sick, I give you two. Anybody else is sick? Are you sick? Yeah. <laughs> you're sick. Or you're hungry. I'm sick. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right, what I advise you, Ben, is uh, everybody can wash his or her hands after. I have hand sanitizer. Right. Yeah, all right, here, you ready? Yeah. All Okay, now, when you see this for the first time, you'd say, oh my God, I'll never be able to compute that. But of course, Dirac comes to the rescue because the d fourth x gives you two delta functions. Uh, because d fourth x over two pi to the fourth e to the i k x minus y well no I'm, 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 I'm saying the wrong thing um, yeah d fourth x d fourth y we have two delta functions so d fourth x and d fourth y each give you a delta function and what are the delta functions well minus let me just see if we're in the right place here Right, so this goes to minus i e squared all the way down to 2 pi squared. U bar q prime t prime gamma a u of q t. U bar p prime s prime gamma b u of p and s. So that's all that. And now what happens here? Well, we have an integral. Actually, we have the a to a b, and we might as well just use the a to a b to lower the b and make it an a. So the a to b, a b is gone. And then we have an integral. We've done the d fourth x, d fourth y. All we have left is d fourth k uh, over k squared minus i epsilon. And now we have two delta functions, four dimensional, delta of, and you just look at the coefficients here. k, coefficient of x is k plus p minus p prime, <coughs> delta 4, and now y minus k plus q minus q prime. So bingo, all of a sudden the thing is simple. We do the integral over k, and we see that this gives us minus i e squared over 2 pi squared u bar and what's left here? Well, it's k is p prime minus p or p minus p prime 
doesn't matter because it's squared. And the minus i epsilon, it turns out, doesn't matter anymore because we're not integrating and p minus p prime is essentially never zero. How did you get rid of both delta? I haven't. Okay. Good question, though. What's left is here minus k. Well, what is minus k? Minus k is p minus p prime. So this is delta 4 of p minus p prime plus q minus q prime. So this is the energy, this delta function conserves energy and momentum. In other words, it makes sure that p plus p, p plus q is equal to p prime plus q prime. This requires puzzling. <coughs> In other words, this, this delta, what you want here is mine. I've used this one. This one says I need to stick in minus k. <coughs> but when you look at a delta function like this, this tells you that minus k is p minus p prime. So I stick that in. OK. This is as far as I'm going to go with this today, uh, with this particular diagram. That's now, um, what I've done is the part that's mysterious for uh, the first time you see it. In other words, when you're first taking a course of quantum field theory, the part that I've gone through is the mysterious and interesting part. It turns out it's the easy part. Because you can just imagine the complexity of this thing. This is a four spinner, that's another four spinner. They both depend upon two four momenta and spins. Same thing over here, you've got a gamma matrix. matrix. You sum over the gamma matrix. Okay. Right. So that, that's actually the hard part. Yeah. How do you remove their i epsilon? Okay, it's the p minus, I mean, if you want, you can put it back. But what we're talking about is a scattering process, and we're really only interested in the scattering. So you go from p to a different p prime. Once p and p prime are different, the, the i epsilon, p minus p prime squared isn't zero. Um, that's only self-energy. It's, it's just. All right, let, let, let me just say, experience tells me this is never zero, all right, for the practical same. purposes. Now, if you want to keep the minus i epsilon just in case, keep it. Okay. Well, it seems like if p minus p prime is zero, then there's no scattering, right? That's right. And we're interested in scattering. So that's the, that's the rationale. All right, um, I was going to use the blank back blackboard, but I think in the interest of my health, I'll stay <laughs> in the front. Um, all right, now we come to the other diagram, which is, <coughs> yeah, sorry, now that we've come back, we're fine. I don't need one, I'm good. Let's uh, change your one. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Thank you, Starman. Thank you. You're welcome. So I was going to do, first of all, the A, the A, what happened to your slash? Did you just decide, did you just, where? So from the second line to there, what happened? Ah, uh, well, A slash is A, B, gamma, B, summed over B. Okay. But the gammas are stuck between the U's, and I can pull the field out. Great question. Your races are all hiding over in the corner. Would you like them to avoid? Can you maybe throw a couple of them to the front? Just throw them against the front. At that point, it's something. Yeah, that throw point. them into the corner. But should I aim for something? <laughs> 
Just go just... right for that X and Y. Oh. <laughs> It's, it's, it's something that only primates and humans do, throwing things. Isn't it great? What? Isn't it great? <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's something that, it's an advantage we have because we walk on two feet. Um, that, by the way, was a big step forward in evolution. Um, <laughs> This is the second story time. And once, <laughs> once we got, I, I mean, I don't know how to the, the details. I don't know if anybody does. But certainly once we were walking on two feet, our hands were free to do things. And once our hands were free to do things, then the utility of a brain, of a, good, of a better brain, was, um, was enhanced. Because you can imagine a dog walking on all fours could be as smart as Einstein, and yet, um, you know, what are you going to do if you need all four legs to move around? You, know, you can't, you can't do that much with a mouth. And um, so, but other animals just got smaller arms. They just decided not to use their arms anymore. Like, I mean, T. Rex, carnivorous, very small arms. We could have gone that way too. I'm sorry, you're saying a ferret? Ferret. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, well, this is, I mean, it's completely different, but like, the. You mean, you mean it used to be well, some animals that were, were bipedal and, and had small, arms and, and they went arms. down to all fours? No, it's small. The, the arms shrank rather than the brain growing bigger, bigger to take advantage of using the hands. They got rid of the arms because they weren't in use. Really? So it could have gone that direction. The Tyrannosaurus I mean, Rex, right, they had a little stuffy a little stuff. I mean, there's no reason for it to go in that direction. It is useful in that way. All right, I mean, okay. I wouldn't say there's no reason. But you know, either way. Right. There's benefits in both directions. Evolution does not always go in the right direction. Let's there's no right direction. It just goes in a direction. Yeah. All right. Now, so we've done this one, and this is just the same diagram. So now, let me get rid of all these diagrams and get, or, or go to the next one. The next one, and we'll again do x, ps comes in, but what comes out is q prime t prime. And then over at y, qt is again absorbed at y, but what comes out is p prime s prime. So you see, these are two different processes. There are two diagrams for this, which are the same, and we get rid of the factor of two. Uh, so now let's let's <coughs> let's think what happens in this case. And <coughs> I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all of this and do this. Gosh, we're going to. I'm not sure how much we're going to get through today. I wanted to do electron-positron scattering, but I don't think we're going to get, certainly not going to get through the whole thing today. We might start it. But I wanted to show you a little more about Dirac spinners and why H0 is what I said it was. OK, so let's see. <coughs> All right, well, the first thing I want to sh sh show you is this. Um, B double prime, no, not B double B of Q double prime, T double prime. On this state, P prime, S prime, Q prime, T prime. This is the final state, but I'm writing it as a state, as a, as a ket instead of a bra, just because it's it's easier to think about. So this is B of Q double prime, P double prime. And what is this? This is B dagger of P prime, S prime, B dagger of Q prime, T prime, zero. 
And now, what I'm going to be looking at is the case in which uh, I'm going to again focus on x, and I'm looking at psi minus, actually. And this psi minus is creating the q prime t prime electron. So that means maybe I should write this as the adjoint of p prime s prime q prime t prime b dagger of q double prime q double prime. So in other words, inside bar minus at x, you're going to have this operator. And it's going to be standing like this next to that out, this final state. And just to see what this is, I'm writing it as a ket, because we have this convention that PQ is B dagger. Let me make sure I've got this right. Well, the way I'm writing it here, it's B dagger. Uh, Well, it's obviously two B daggers, but uh, the question is, is it P prime, Q prime, or PQ? And to, to let me just make sure that I was consistent, because what I originally said, what was written here, was Yes. What I said was that if the state is PQ, then the operators were B dagger P, B dagger Q. And so I've been consistent in the two cases. Okay, so in other words, you have to you have to make a convention for what your notation is. And the convention that I adopted is if it's PQ, then the order of the creation operators is PQ. And this is important because we're going to use this, this annihilation operator, or probably this creation operator, to create the electron that's the Q prime electron, not the P prime electron. And so for this to act on that, there's, a, is, there's an extra minus sign. In other words, this is minus B of Q double prime, Q double prime, B dagger of Q prime, T prime, B dagger of P prime, S prime, minus sign. That's it, isn't it? Huh? Well, it's equal to its negative, isn't it? It's not the anti-commutator. It's the anti-commutator. In other words, I interchange these two, you get a minus sign. A minus sign, I, I'm, 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 they're both creation operators, so it's just a minus sign. So that means that this thing We're all going to be in the hospital. <laughs> I just hope they have good internet service. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so okay, so we have a minus sign here, and um, in other words, this is equal to uh, p prime s prime with a minus sign is. is once we integrate and so forth, we're going to get an extra minus sign here. So, so I'll just write dot, dot, dot for the stuff I'm leaving out. So that means then that our, our amplitude is equal to minus e squared over 2 pi q, p prime s prime, integral time order product, uh, psi bar of y, a slash of y, psi of y, u bar of q prime, 
S prime A slash of X U of P and S <coughs> E to the I Q minus Q prime No, it's not Q minus Q prime <coughs> P minus Q prime X, P4 X, D4 Y, Q2. Okay, so we're using, what we've just done is we've just done this vertex, absorbing the electron, emitting the final electron, but this time the Q prime final electron, and we got a minus sign. And once again, I've got a spurious subscript. Okay, well, what's left? Well, what's left is just going to work out the same as before because we're just going to use the pus, the annihilating part of that, the creating part of that to make the other two, or effectively to cancel out these two states. And that gives us then minus e squared over 2 pi to the 6. And now uh, vacuum integral time ordered product. And now it's just um, u bar p prime s prime a slash of y u of q prime t, no, qt. And then u bar of q prime s prime a slash of x u of p and s. Sir, what do we have with q prime s prime? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is p s. This is q. Ah, oh, this is q. Yeah, you're right. This is q prime t prime. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Good. You're entitled to two chocolates. Sure. Yes, you want them? No. Sure. Okay. Um, but now these two guys gave us uh, give us this phase factor e to the i q minus p prime y d four of x of y, and now we just have the vacuum state. And if we clean this up by pulling out all the numbers and just leaving the operators, then we get minus e squared over 2 pi to the 6, u bar p prime s prime, and let us just say gamma a u of qt u bar q prime t prime gamma b u of p s and now we'll have vacuum integral vacuum time order product a uh, a of y a b of x vacuum and then e to the i p minus q prime x plus i q minus p prime y p four of x p four of y. All right. Well, once again, we pop in the propagator, and um, that gives us an i e squared over two pi now to the ten u bar p prime s prime gamma a u q t u bar q prime t prime gamma lower a u of p and s uh, integral. I've used up the a to a b and the minus i. Uh, so we then have e to the i k x minus y plus i p minus q prime x 
plus i q minus p prime y over k squared minus i epsilon d fourth k d fourth x d fourth y. So once again, we pop out these delta functions and uh, we're going to get the other term, we'll call that 1, other term 2 is going to be i e squared over 2 pi squared. Then it's going to be u bar p prime s prime gamma a u of q t u bar q prime t prime gamma a u p s and uh, the k is going to be q prime minus p or p minus q prime, it doesn't matter if it's squared. Somehow it looks nicer if we write it as p minus q prime squared. And then an overall energy momentum delta function. All right. So what do you do? You add the two. Sorry. And, and yes. I'm sorry, going back, what happened here? Uh, a to AB? The A to AB went over here. We had, I skipped it. We had, when we go from here to there, we have an A to AB. I, took, I did A to AB gamma upper B is gamma lower A. Okay. Unless <clears throat> anyone else wants it. Do you want to chalk them? Yeah. Have you had a chocolate at all today? Um, I'm all right. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. The yeah. top line up there. Why? Why here? Yeah. Why can't you just? Which, why do you have to, to create the Q um, electron first? So in some sense, when you do it, you, you apply the B, Q prime, T prime. What, what I was trying to do was analyze what this was. So in other words, we're going to have a B dagger of Q double prime, D double prime, and we're going to use it to create this, or to, we're going to use it effectively to create this thing, or equivalently to uh, uh, cancel this in the final state and get back down to the vacuum. Okay. Okay. So, so what it's equal to is this state here is the adjoint of this state. So when you do it adjoint wise, you have B dagger Q prime P prime, B dagger P prime S prime, and then B dagger, it's not B dagger here, it's B. No, wait a minute, it is B dagger here. The other Bs are. And yeah, these were annihilation operators because I've taken the adjoint of this thing. So it's B, B, B dagger of um, B double prime, B double prime. Now the point is that we're, we're going to use this delta function. And in order to get this delta function, we move this one across, and that gives us a minus sign. But, but why did you start out with pulling the, the B, P prime, S prime out first? Why couldn't you have done it the other way? In other words, why did I say that T prime, S prime, Q prime, T prime was that instead of the reverse? This order? Yeah. That's arbitrary. Okay. You have to decide what your order is. So and then, then you stick with it from, okay. for both Feynman diagrams. Okay. 
You guys are trying to get a chocolate out of me, is that right? Uh, he didn't know about it, but I was going to ask you, what, what, are you yeah, what are you teaching today, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. Electron electron scattering. Ooh, ooh. Thank you. things together, uh, you have this relative minus sign. That's reflecting Fermi statistics. And the electrons are fermions. And it came from the anti-symmetry. It came from the fact of the anti-symmetry in P prime and S prime, a P prime and Q prime in the final state. That's where that minus sign came from. All right, we have a little bit of time. Um, I think instead of starting the positron thing, I'm going to say some things about spinners. Uh, let me also say something about the interaction picture, um, just to make it a little bit, I think we can erase all this. Hold on. Now that I think about it, I just erase the most important equations. So let me talk about the interaction picture to start with. The, the idea is that we're trying to compare. In other words, he, he, this actually is Weinberg's way of thinking about it. And so we define something called u of t and t zero, and um, e to the i h zero t e to the minus i h t minus t zero e to the minus i h zero t zero. Of course, what he does is he converts both t's to tors just makes the thing harder to understand. Um, so let's consider this operator. This obviously is the operator that, that we want here between an initial state and a final state. If the initial state and the final state are both eigenstates of H0, which they are, because H0 is the only thing that we have eigenstates for. Um, and moreover, we know energy momentum is going to be conserved. Um, actually, never mind what, even whether energy momentum is conserved. That's irrelevant. The, these extra operators acting on these eigenstates of H0 are just going to produce an overall phase factor that doesn't make any difference. So, basically, some final state, and I'll put a zero on it to mean that it's an eigenstate of H0, U of T, T0, some initial state, eigenstate of H0, is the same, is a phase, so it's actually E to the I, E F <coughs> minus E I, well, no, it's more complicated. It's this phase, but the phase is irrelevant. It's E F T minus E minus I E I T zero. An irrelevant phase times, let us say, F zero E to the minus I H T minus T zero I zero. So this is the thing that we know we want for scattering. And up to a phase, this thing will give it to us, and this thing is simpler. And now, what is this thing? Well, compute the time derivative of that. U dot will be e to the i h zero t i h zero. 
and then the time derivative acting on that is minus i h e to the minus i h t minus t zero e to the minus i h zero t zero. This thing here is minus i e to the i h zero t v e to the minus i h t minus t zero e to the minus i h zero t zero. And now we stick in. We say this is minus i e to the i h zero t v e to the minus i h zero t e to the i h zero t. And now e to the minus i h t minus t zero e to the minus i h zero t zero. Now this thing we call v of t, which is what we did last time. And so we have the rule u dot is minus i v u. And this is the thing which when you integrate gives you that u is equal to time ordered exponential minus i integral v of t prime dt prime. And of course, it would go from t0 to t. So this is a little bit simpler than what I did for you on Monday. I, th I think it's, it's, it's better. All right. Um, now, we've had all these spinners that we've been talking about, and I derived for you, or you derived in the homework problem, the various, various spin sum formulas, which are important. Um, and in fact, let me just mention how they come about. You see, suppose you were going to compute this. Well, if you're going to compute it, I would say you write a program for it, or you pull a program down from some place on the web to, to do it for you, because this is complicated. I mean, in my view, matrix algebra, you do with your fingers if it's two by two. If it's more than two by two, you use a computer. <laughs> And, um, but what would this thing be? Well, this is the amplitude to take, to compute, and the probability you take the absolute value squared. So you see, you're going to have something with, uh, for example, a u, p, and s. You're going to have a u dagger p and s somewhere, where you take the complex conjugate. Then you're going to, if you are lucky, you sum over the spins. When you sum over the spins, you're going to have things like u, u bar, summed over spins. Well, those are the spin sums that we computed uh, last week or the week before, and they're in the notes on Dirac's spinners. But what I forgot to mention to you was that these u's and v's have very nice orthonormality properties. And the orthonormality properties are that For a given p, u of p and s dagger u of same p s prime is delta s s prime. V dagger of p and s, v of p and s prime is delta s s prime. And now the one that you really like is u dagger of p and s v of minus p s prime is zero and consequently v dagger of p and s <coughs> u of minus p s prime is zero. These relations um, uh, are used in the easiest derivation of the easy part of the Hamiltonian, the easiest derivation that I know of, and I'll do it for you next Monday. It's in the notes, actually, already. Um, but let me show you a little bit how this thing works, since we have two minutes left. Um, 
So I'll, 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 I'll give you the flavor of it. I don't know if I'll have time to do <coughs> every aspect of it. And I don't think I should, for health reasons, I don't think I should go over today. So it's um, 43. Okay, U of P and S, what is it? Um, well, one way of writing it is M minus I P slash over the square root of 2 P0, P0 plus M U of 0 and S. And first of all, you know that for P equals 0, these things are all normal. That was sort of the way we constructed them. Um, and the fact that this is um, is that way uh, <coughs> let me just remind you of um, something here it's Yeah, actually, that's the way I did write it. Okay, and one more thing. Um, what we know is that I gamma zero, U of zero and S is U of zero and S. On the other hand, I gamma zero, V of zero and S is minus V of zero and S. And those were consequences of the fact that the these spinners are designed to make the, the Dirac field, when it has the time dependence in, uh, of the free Hamiltonian, that it satisfies the free Dirac equation, no interactions, just basically d slash plus m psi equals zero. That means the spinners do something, and at, when you set the momentum equals zero, you get these relations. Okay, so you just form this structure, uh, u dagger u, so u dagger u is going to be u dagger 0 s, and then what you have here is m plus i p slash dagger m minus i p slash u <coughs> of 0 and s prime. And then I'm going to ignore the square root. Uh, it'll, well, all right, so two square roots of 2p0, p0 plus m. And now, whoops, we're over time. So for reason of health, I'm going to quit at this point. Um, so let's just stop the thing. And, and